as minimalist design makes way for bolder colors, stronger graphics and organic shapes, African chic takes center stage. Let's take a look at how the African accent makes its way into today's finest home. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we visit a townhouse that, from the exterior, has a seemingly understated existence. But step foot inside, and you are met with an elegant African chic interior. The design firm responsible for the most recent update to the property is Kim H. New. Yet you know, one can't help but notice this beautiful marble staircase. And by the looks of things, there are quite a few hero pieces here. What was the brief for the home? Well, um, the client actually came to us. Um, he's from overseas and he wanted a bit of a home in Johannesburg when he did business here. And he stayed in a hotel, a prominent hotel in Johannesburg at one stage uh, that had a very strong African theme. And he asked us to create a comfortable space that had that strong influence, but wasn't a copy of that. So he wanted sophistication, a place where he could entertain, but something that clearly reminded him of the fact that he was in, in South Africa. Even though he was in Joburg, he still wanted to feel a little bit like he's in the bush, but with a lot of sophistication. Well, I know the African theme is very bold in nature, but it's not every day that you come across a red and gold kitchen, but it has so much impact. Well, yeah, I, like I said, the client's from overseas, so he's French actually, and he said to us, French people don't do boring kitchens. He loves cooking, so one of his requests was something that would pop out when people walked in. He loves to entertain around the stove. He loves to make dishes for his uh, guests. And uh, we had specific requests around the cookware and everything else. And uh, the pieces he chose was red. So we took our cue from there and said, well, why don't we bring a bit of red in here? Red really suits the style of the home, but it also just jumps out at you. And obviously there had to be that bit of bling. So we had to bring some, some brass plating into the kitchen as well. Well, a little birdie told me that behind me, this actually used to be a wall or a room. How did you manage to create this airy open space? Well, when I met the client first, he said to me, I need to feel like I'm in nature. Now, they don't have a massive garden, so we had to maximize what we've, whatever we had. And we wanted to bring some light in. We had this beautiful tall window on this side that did bring light in. But it all ended up reflecting onto this wall of a, a small little old school, I think it was a private lounge or something. So when I walked into the space and he told me what the brief was, I said to him, well, we're going to have to knock out the walls. So we took out outside walls to bring in more light and we had to take this out so that this is an inviting flowing space. As you walk in, you feel like you're welcomed into the space. It opens up into the garden and you experience it from every corner. Well, just about the layout, can you talk us through the navigation of this downstairs area? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's not a big house, so it's not a massive house. It's still a, uh, in, a, in a security complex in Joburg, so it's your typical type of home. And um, as you come in through the front door, you're greeted by this marble staircase. It wasn't a marble staircase originally, but the client said, I need something with elegance. And then I wanted this window to be a feature piece as you come in through the front door, because you can still see a bit of the garden on the other side of that. So we needed something that really told you what type of space you're walking into. So I approached one of our amazing suppliers and they created this beautiful natural edge table. And we actually started with that before we started the kitchen. So. In placing the table, we realized well, we're going to have to join this up with the kitchen because it's not a massive kitchen. So the idea is that you literally have this kitchen space that flows into the living area on that side and then takes you out to the outdoor patio and the Boma area. And that, to me, that's kind of how you would entertain. I mean, if you come over for a dinner party, cooking is taking place, then we're dining, and then we're having some drinks outside. So it just kind of naturally flows that way. Well, you speak of African chic, and the look and feel of the space really feels like you took all the boxes. Can you talk to us about the elements here? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think the strongest element that really brings that African chic feel about is the texture and its timbers. I wanted to achieve a warm and inviting space that, I mean, to me, Africa is about nature. And what's better than timber? So we've got these uh, vertical slats that I've brought into the certain elements that we had to keep when opening up the space and actually allowing us to screen off certain areas and 
create a bit of a cohesive field that links it all together. Then obviously there's the strong natural edge table element, which is unmistakable African. And then the chic part we brought in through the bling in the kitchen, the, the marble, the red, the brass, and then certain elements linking throughout, all put together with that beautiful solid timber floor that we put in. And when we do go through to the lounge area, you'll see there's some unmistakable African pieces from live root tables to a, a high hand carved bench. And then the, the chic part, which is the deep buttoned leather seats and the beautiful plush sofa and the curtains that just kind of blow in the wind. We're in the lounge area now and there's such a delicate balance between different materials like the wood and the leather and the glass. What is the recipe for success to get this execution? Well, I don't like to say there's a recipe for success. I think you have to suss out each space for what it is and what it needs. Um, obviously, we wanted an open space. I didn't want to clutter this space. We really went to the lengths of actually removing walls so we have more of an open feel. And so the kitchen dining area links through to this space and takes us to the outside. But uh, we had to anchor it with some key pieces. So bringing back to the African chic feel, we actually have Nguni, which I think is one of the most amazing skins to use for this type of style, on the floor to demarcate the center of the room. Beautiful root table, which also links back to the style. And then the more elegant and luxurious um, finishes with our velvety textures on the sofa and the levers on the chairs with a deep buttoning detail just to give it a bit of class and elegance. And then something a bit more rustic, like a hand-carved bench. It feels like something you would find in the bush somewhere. So um, I think it's, it's feeling out the space, seeing what works. And to us, because we wanted openness and light, kept it to a minimum and kept a similar palette throughout with some punchy pieces. One of my favorite features about this home is how much light comes in here. Talk to me about the balance of natural light and artificial light. Well, that's a very important balance when it comes to interior. Um, a lot of people tend to skimp when it comes to lighting and lighting is really the thing that sets the mood, sets the tone. I mean, this home at night is something special. It really feels warm and inviting. And we tried to achieve that because I wanted a space where um, you could cater for every different time of the day. So as you can see, there's a lot of natural light that comes in with the walls we've removed. There's a lot of natural light. But we wanted some indirect lighting for, for mood, so we brought in some cove lights and that's, that's a nice neat little trick you can use in a home, some indirect lighting that reflects off the ceiling so you get a softer glow and then some more functional down lights to actually give you functional lighting if you were busy with something else. And obviously there's the fireplace behind us that lets down through some natural light, but also at night, what sets more of a mood than a fireplace you could sit in front of. If you pick a particular style, like African chic, for example, is it something you should carry around through the entire home, or can you break it up a bit? Well, you can absolutely carry it through. I tend to actually encourage people not to do that. This is still your home, this is your space, it's not a showroom. So whatever speaks to you, and it doesn't have to be the same style, you can incorporate throughout the, the space. And this house, actually, what we tried to do was, he requested this African chic feel downstairs for entertainment and for when he arrives home but we still wanted to pay homage to his European background because he is actually a European. And uh, we brought some more classical contemporary um, elements upstairs. Uh, to achieve that, for example, what we did is as you come up to the stairs to the pajama lounge, it still has a slight African, almost safari feel to it, a calming space. And then as you cross the bridge towards the bedrooms, it links through to more classic European paneling on the walls and a similar timber to what we've got downstairs. Um, a little secret hideaway that's got a more colonial feel to it. It's actually a bit of a gentleman's cigar lounge. And then through to a very calming main bedroom where the bathroom you'll see is actually very classic inspired. And it's got a couple of statement pieces with colors that's com completely opposite to what you find downstairs. Uh, it kind of just seamlessly flows through and without you realizing it, it transitions through to the different styles. After the break, we meet with Samuel Alexander to talk about the exterior of the house and how they use limitations to create an entertainer's haven. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we're visiting a townhouse that appears modest from the exterior, but reveals an opulent interior that speaks to an African theme. I chatted to Erard Nivot of Kim H. New about the interior and which elements they incorporated to bring the home to life. With seamless indoor-outdoor living, I'm keen to find out more about the mechanics that make this possible. 
Sam, this patio literally feels like we're still in the house. Yeah, of course. I mean, what we tried to really achieve here was bringing the outside inside and the inside out. And a true African space ultimately achieves that. I mean, we have such gorgeous landscapes and such gorgeous spaces in Africa. And so why not try and do this here? So the way we really achieved that was by having these frameless stackable doors that completely open up the space and allow the lounge to feel like the outdoors. And then of course we have these drapes that just make the space feel so luxe and so comfortable. Absolutely, it almost softens the space for what is, after all, the exterior. Yeah, and I feel that what we really had to achieve here and the brief was that this house, the space needed to be an entertainer space. And the client, when we pitched the whole idea to them, they loved the concept of having a room outside but was inside. So if you were to close these drapes up, it would feel like part of the space. But once you open up these drapes, it just lends itself to this gorgeous garden. And it feels like there's such a smooth transition between the indoor and the outdoor, but each space holds its own. How did you achieve this? So a really smart way to create this indoor-outdoor feel is to allow the floors to continue traveling outdoors. And so we decided to do a timber deck that wraps around right to the pool area. And that was something that the client really, really wanted. Again, this allows and lends itself to this African chic vibe. Then we decided to build the space up with these gorgeous drapes. Again, bringing in some natural textures. So these are linen uh, drapes and it really does allow the space to feel luxe. We then decided to have this beautiful wooden table, timber table outside, and that allows for this entertainment factor which the client was very strong about. So I mean, a 12-seater entertainer's vibe outside. Yeah, I mean, for what could be a compact space, it's more than enough space for entertainment. And of course, you've got your fire pit down yonder, which is so impactful with that monochromatic effect. So what the client really wanted is they wanted to enjoy sunsets and there's nothing more beautiful than an African sunset. And we decided to actually create quite a soft, muted Mediterranean vibe over there. And yeah, once you sit in there, you're gonna love it. I mean, with the plushness of the space and that again lends itself to this African chic environment. So instead of being at the bush, we brought the bush to the urban area. Well, I can't resist. I'm ready to go down there and enjoy the view. Let's go. Sam, I just love these tiles that you've selected for the fire pit, but tell me, why the black and white theme? So, at Kim H. New, we're pretty bold, and what we really wanted to create was the stark contrast between natural and something really luxe, and I think that this contrast with the black and white against all the natural textures and the luxe, it's just, yeah, I mean, the black and white just really stands out, it's bold. Um, the client also really had a brief that was, they wanted something a bit modern outside. And so we took that and extrapolated on that brief and here we are sitting in this amazing fire pit. It's actually one of my favorite places in the whole space actually. Now I see what you meant about having a view from every sort of corner of the exterior, from the balcony at the bedroom and even here, there's a great surrounding of nature. Talk to us about sort of the different views. So when we were designing this space, while this was being installed I was up in the bedroom and on that balcony when I looked down it was such a breath of fresh air looking down on something so modern and yet it feels a bit Mediterranean also and then when you're around the pool area looking onto this your eyes just drawn to want to go and sit over there um, and then again this being juxtaposed against your patio area which is not as bold and stark as this just your attention is constantly drawn and when you're in the house and you actually traverse and you come around the corner this is the first thing that you see and then of course when you sit over here and you look at this beautiful home I mean the view is just impeccable the lighting is amazing and yeah it just feels kind of hotelish totally and I mean it's uniquely beautiful and yet we're in a townhouse complex. So did that come with some challenges and what additions could you make to make it this unique home? Huge challenges. The one thing was not being able to change the facade. So we had to work with a structure that was there and make it beautiful. 
the client really wanted their home to feel like an entertainer's home. So we had to come up with really clever ideas in order to change the aesthetic appeal on the outside. So one way that we achieved that is by having these stackaway doors, frameless glass stackaway doors, which just disappears once you open them and the home is just completely opened up. Then we decided to have this gorgeous deck which wraps around into the pool also and that just gives it a different feel. It allows for different spaces in the home. So it doesn't feel like one space, it feels like different spaces. And then again, having this gorgeous fire pit which then feels like a little home on its own also. Dealing with the challenge of not being able to change things aesthetically on the outside, but we could do things superficially, like hang some gorgeous drapes, which then allows for different spaces again. So yeah, it was a huge challenge, but um, creativity needs challenges in order to succeed. Well, I think you did an excellent job, and you can tell that this home is made for a good time. Yeah. So Sam, tell me in your own opinion, what are the key elements that make for a great entertainment haven? So I think what's important, and I think what I know is important, is comfortability. You have to be comfortable. If your home is not comfortable, or at least your entertainment space is not comfortable, people are not going to linger longer. So you want the space to be comfortable. So like, for example, we have here, we have a concrete structure, but we've applied some really plush cushioning um, and then color, of course. Um, seating is also huge in a entertaining space. You have to have enough and ample seating and then different kind of seating. So again, like this space, we have some pool lounges, we have some dining chairs, and then we've got this gorgeous relaxation area. But yes, for me, what's important is comfort. Stay with us as after the break, we delve deeper into what makes for a modern African chic aesthetic. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we visit a townhouse that sits neatly between its neighbors. Step inside and you are met with texture and warmth. It's a house that acknowledges its African roots without tapping into cliche design. Now, we dig deeper into what makes for a modern take on an African chic design scheme. Gerard, when I think of African interior design, I think animal print, I think earthy colors, but as soon as you add chic next to it, then you think it needs to be a little bit more well considered. So how do we bring African chic to life? I think most people think about animal prints and all the things you've mentioned when they think of this style. I actually tend to disagree with it slightly because I think it's, it's, it's a style we have to be careful not to do the cliche game lodge type of look and feel that everyone's so used to it. It shouldn't be plastered with oranges and reds actually. It's having those strong African elements as your base and as accents, but then bringing a more contemporary, rich, luxury feel into the space. So it's kind of a bit more of a middle ground, less all about Africa, but strongly influenced by it. Sam, I must say, I was a little bit surprised not to see any animal print in your mood board, but it still looks so elevated. Talk us through the look you've put together. So what's really important here is we're trying to create an African chic feel. And most times people would generally go towards strong African prints, but we've decided, and of course, naturally, it's different for, ev for every designer, but we've decided to go really, really natural with pops of color and strong elements of natural textures. So we've based our look on some really, really strong stone. Um, so this you could use again in a countertop, on the floors, on the walls, and then timbers. Timbers you could use um, on the floors again. You could use some of these as shop fitted elements also. And then what really makes an African chic space chic are the fabrics. So we've decided to have some linens, um, we've got some boucle fabric over here, and then we've decided to add that lush, luxe textured fabric, um, which are, I mean, like we've gone for some greys over here, and we've gone for a really, really deep iron color over here. So that's really how we've decided to achieve. And then your pops of color, you've got reds, and you can use some navies. We've decided to go for a deeper, deeper navy color. And then naturally, what accents navy are brasses. So yeah, that's how we've decided to do it. I want to actually echo what Sam said. What I say to my designers is almost think of it as the African landscape. So you've got the nice base natural colors, the African landscape, the bush, the field, which is your more neutral colors. 
and then imagine the sunset. So that's what makes it beautiful when you look at a picture like that. So you've got your reds, your blues, and all these color that kind of that just brings it all to life. So if you want to do African chic, imagine that. You've got your textured uh, landscape, and then you bring in your colors to em emphasize it. Well, would you say that's sort of how you start from the bottom up? Because, I mean, you're really spoiled for choice when it comes to color and texture. Can you talk us through where you'd start and then build it up? I always start at the base and then work your way up. I think it's important to have a strong foundation to any design in any space that you create. So we've been mentioning texture, and I think texture is always the key for me in any design texture to keep it specifically on the style. So you bring in your natural textures. You've got your leathers. You can bring in your animal prints. You can do your skins. You can do your furry feel, look and feel fabrics, your timbers. So start with your floor, your walls, and then work your way in. Like I said, it's, it's painting a picture. So have your landscape, have your rolling lawns and beautiful trees, and then bring the sunset into it. Now Sam, not to be biased or anything, but if someone can't resist an animal print, which one would you incorporate into the scheme? So I think really, African chic, you really could incorporate any African print into it. I mean, it's Africa, obviously, so I mean, it's really simple. But what we've done in our space is we've incorporated a zebra print. So, for example, outside we have a very strong black and white theme incorporated with some mustards also. And then inside we have some rich leather textures and the black and white just pops against that. So yeah, really, I mean, it's easy to, to put a print against this, uh, the scheme. And I'd like to talk a little bit about where this scheme is most appropriate. I mean, could you fit this into a modern contemporary home or a townhouse? What are your thoughts, Erat? Absolutely, I think you could fit it in anywhere. Uh, it's quite a popular style these days internationally. And I think it's because people are creating quite a hype around Africa because it's such a rich continent. It's such an honest continent almost. And that really appeals to everyone. And, and that allows us to use it in any space. I mean, you could use it in a small apartment. Obviously, be a bit more careful with your striking elements you bring in there so it doesn't overpower anything. But massive spaces. You see it in hotels all the time. Your bush lodges used to be orange and red and your typical olive greens. And now it's all gone to a much more chic approach where you kind of, any, anyone from anywhere in the world could walk into a space and feel comfortable. I think for me, it always comes down to having fun. Your previous question was about animal prints. Have fun with it. What do you feel comfortable with? Your space needs to speak to your personality and your lifestyle. And we're all Africans, so why can it not speak to our continent as well? And who doesn't like to live on the wild side? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to dive a little deeper into the materials you've chosen here. Um, I mean, you'll see some of it's actually the opposite to what you would expect, but it kind of ties back to that whole natural feel. So timbers, which you would expect is running it through the space, it, it creates a certain warmth and, and comfort to a space, always. I mean, you, can, you can't go wrong with timber floors. But then we've brought in some more slightly European approach, which is kind of contradictory to the style itself. I mean, your navy blues and your white marbles. But some of the best marbles do come from Africa, so it's still African. It's just been made popular by Europe. But it gives us a very nice neutral base to start with. Like I said, you've got your neutral base and you work your way up to your textures and your colors. Um, I think Sam can tell you a bit more about those. And then we've decided to really allow the space to feel luxe by choosing really, really soft fabrics. So again, as I mentioned, we have bars in this space. So in some of our fabrics, this is from a Monarch book, um, you've got some brass gold hints and tints in this fabric. We've then coupled that with a kind of gray linen feels so that it really does not feel too luxe but it still feels quite natural and that's really what we wanted to achieve and then of course for curtaining we've decided to use a soft boucle fabric which is also a linen couple that with some dark fabrics your grays naturally yeah we've got some iron um, really just grounds the whole look and just completes it and then we've decided to use a rug in the pajama lounge which you've seen that also is really, really lax. It just allows the space to feel homely and it allows the space to feel thought of and thought through. And then again, like Erad said, your leathers really just, I mean, like what is an African look without leathers? I mean, Africa is synonymous for leather. So yeah, we love our leathers. And yeah, that's how we decided to do it. Yeah, I think it, you could probably bring it down to one thing. I spoke to a European tourist once in Austin. Why do you guys love Africa so much? And he said, the thing about Africa is the experience. I think if you keep that in mind, if you're going to do this style, it's about the experience. That's why we go for these soft textures. It's, you almost want to walk through the space and touch everything, and it's a different experience as you go through it. So I think keep that in mind when you put together a scheme in this style, and you can't go wrong. That's it for this week. 
Remember to engage with us on social media as we love to hear from you.